Good evening. I would like to open the 22nd meeting of fiscal year 2020 of the Milton Planning Board. Board members are going to introduce ourselves. I'm Cheryl Tugayas, the chair. April Anderson, member. Denny. Um, Den Denny Swenson, secretary. Kathleen. Kathleen O'Donnell, member. Mr. member. Bill Clark, okay. planning director. Allison Quinn, assistant planner. Julia Getman, clerk. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to have uh, people on mute who are um, not board members, but we will give opportunity for folks to speak. So in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law related to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, this meeting of the Milton Planning Board is being held remotely utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software. Bill, if you can move the agenda so people could see those who are watching Milton Access can see the Zoom. So if one would like to join by uh, device, it could be um, via zoom.com with that meeting number and with that password. Also, you can join the meeting by phone with the number 929-205-6099. And you will need that same meeting ID and password. So that is 822-5849-1131 and password 212471. The meeting is being televised live via Milton Access Television and it will also be available on their website uh, to view at your convenience. Real-time comment can be made via the audio feature of the platform, whether joining by computer, mobile device, or phone. And town planner Bill Clark or myself will be controlling the mute feature until I ask for public comment. And as I said, board members will not be muted. So we're going to um, uh, jump and, uh, to item five and we'll come back to items two, three, and four. Actually, four is blank, so we won't, we'll skip over four as well. But on uh, number five, it's the public hearing for the site plan approval for 919 Blue Hill Avenue, Little Sprouts, which was continued from our May 14th, 2020 meeting. Uh, Ned Corcoran, representing um, the applicant, is here to give us a brief update. All right, Ned, you have- Yes, the good evening. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, as I understand, we are still operating within the purview of the governor's emergency order and unable to move forward with contested hearing. So I'm asking that the board continue this, that, this matter this evening until June 11th at 7.05. In the meantime, we are finalizing an amended site plan, which we will file um, for the property. Um, we are pursuing a site plan under the as of right conditions of the property with the building located on the southerly portion of the site with access and egress to and from Atherton Street with an egress only to um, uh, Route 138 to Blue Hill Avenue southbound. Um, we have a new traffic engineer, Vanessa and Associates, who will be introduced um, when we get to start the hearing. Okay, thank you, Ned. Do any uh, members have any questions? Um, I have questions. Oh, sorry, oh, Danny. April. You go ahead first. I was just going to ask if we're going to get a, an amended uh, request before the next meeting. Is that your intent? Yeah. Submit some material? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're filing it, uh, we're hoping to file it by tomorrow. Okay. So if you're going by as of right, your client doesn't need to go before the ZBA, do you still need site plan approval from the planning board? Yes. Um, I don't think so, but the town has determined that we do, so um, I would have to fight that one in court, and we're not planning to do that. Okay. So we're moving forward on site plan approval. Um, 
And and are you going with option A or something similar to that? Is that the Yes. Yes, option one, which is the five thousand square foot building that sits perpendicular to Blue Hill Avenue and is located in the southerly portion of the property and um, with primary access and egress to and from Atherton Street. With a, and we've got a, a wrinkle that we've added to that, which is an egress um, drive to Blue Hill Avenue at the southerly portion of the site. So we've been, so that's a unfortunately, new we've been to the the new, the, the new element is the egress on Blue Hill Avenue? Yes. And, you know, we had to redo drainage. All of the components of the project had to be redone because we're basically flipping the site, um, moving the building from one side to the other and the parking lot to the other side. So we've had to redo the, the stormwater and drainage um, utility connections, et cetera. All of that will be laid out in the site plan application. Okay, so uh, since this is a public hearing, I'm we're going to, I don't, we don't have a uh, raise your hand feature, right? So we, if we want to see if someone wants to speak, we're going to need to unmute them. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so I will unmute all. Okay, um, is there anyone who would like um, to address the board or ask a question of Mr. Corcoran related to this matter? I, I'd just like to note that the, um, the access code on the agenda that I received is wrong, so the public might not be able to get into this, but they may be seeing it on Milton Access, but, um, but that might be why we're not getting much of a response. So, Bill, do you want to scroll back up so they can see the um, the ID? So that meeting ID, zoom.com, join a meeting with that meeting ID, and then with that password. So, Ned, yeah. if, uh, um, are you going to... Um, stay with us for a bit. What we could do is go to a couple of other agenda items and leave this hearing open and come back to it before we continue it to give any member of the public who may want to call in an opportunity to That's do fine. so. I will, um, yeah, I'll turn on the television and at least watch okay. um, <laughs> the proceedings. Again. So I know it's not quite timed up right when it's on television, but um, it's close enough. All right, so again, just for anyone watching the phone number, if you'd like to call, call in rather than come in by computer or um, tablet, the phone number is 929-205-6099. The same meeting ID and password are required. All right, so while we see if anyone else wants to join us on that, on the administrative items, minutes. We uh, approved a number of minutes at our last meeting. I don't believe we have any um, uh, to review or approve this evening, so uh, we, we won't need to do that. Our next meeting dates are June 11th and June 25th. We also have um, town meeting on June 15th, and as I mentioned last time, there's a town meeting also scheduled for July 28th, and um, it's our intent to, su to resubmit the zoning articles um, that were to have been in the May annual town meeting uh, for that July 28th town meeting. And uh, we discussed uh, some revisions to the Milton Village overlay, mixed use overlay PUD at our last meeting, uh, and we have that on our agenda later under old business. Um, we will need to hold public hearings uh, for that, um, the amended language. Yep. And um, the as soonest as we could do that would be, um, Bill, would we be, do we have time to advertise for the June 25th? Yes. Yes, okay. So we will hold the public hearing. 
on the um, amendments to the Milton Village Mixed Use PUD overlay at our June 25th meeting and advertisements uh, will be placed in the Milton Times um, and posted on the town website for that. And then uh, our next item, the upcoming reorganization of the board. Well, um, we normally have that right after the election. So the election had been um, postponed until June 9th. Um, so our next meeting will be after that election. And that's my suggested meeting to have us vote for um, the reorg. Not, that would also inc uh, that would include the chair, the secretary, and then also the committee assignments. Well, um, why wouldn't we just do the committee assignment now, since I'm already sitting on the meetings for the housing folks? I thought we already did committees in the spring. We Somebody do them every year. Yeah. So but we somebody contacted me, and I said, "Sure, I'll do the technology committee again." Hmm. But okay. I, I'm happy to. That, that that was because that's the one that went through the selectmen, but the selectmen didn't need to appoint you to that. The okay. planning board needs to appoint you to that. Okay. There's a member of the planning board, there's a member of the selectmen or their designee. Um, and then somebody from the public, oh no, from the zoning board of appeals, I'm sorry. Right. Um, so ZBA gets to pick their person, planning board gets to pick their person and the select board gets to put in their person or designee. All right, so Kathleen, um, your suggestion, we do the committee assignments at tonight's meeting. Does yes. anybody else have any comment about that? I'm not me. I'm on capital planning. I'd like to stay on it unless there's... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> unless anybody wants to boot you off. All yeah, right. keep four more. We meet at 7.15 a.m. in normal circumstances, so... All right, and Kathleen, you're uh, interested in and in, have attended a housing committee, correct? Yes, and I have a housing committee meeting this coming Monday. Okay. And I've been our representative to the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Is anyone else interested in taking that position? Nope. <laughs> Nobody's beating the door down for that? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, then I guess I'll continue with that. Presuming I win the election on <laughs> June 9th, right? Um, so I'm, this is the last meeting of my five-year term. Um, so uh, the next meeting, since I'm the only one on the ballot, will be the first meeting of my new term, presumably. Um, and it'll be, so tonight will be, uh, uh, I think if, if we have our uh, June 11th meeting and we organize the agenda in advance of that, I'm, I'm happy to, um, to uh, chair that meeting and then pass over um, for the June 25th meeting. So if, uh, if folks want to think about who might be interested uh, in being chair. It, so that, that, okay. And just to clear up, I was understanding that Rich, you didn't want to be on the housing committee anymore. <laughs> I didn't want to make it sound as if I was booting you off. No, no, no. I'm, I'm really happy that I, that you just said you were, um, that you're joining it. It's not, and just, you know, it's, uh, it's not that I didn't, I don't want to be, I really enjoyed the time on there. Um, it's just that um, I've got uh, like a lot going on right now. Just, I mean, I know everybody is, I just, I haven't been able to um, um, over the last month or two, to, the meetings just got a little out of hand for me. Uh, too many of them and they were, weren't at good times and I couldn't follow it. So it did, that's why I brought up a couple times that I'd really like to, you know, and this would have been like, I've already done it for, uh, since I've been on this board. Um, so I've been on it a while. So it's probably makes sense to give somebody else an opportunity, but it just, it comes at a good time for me because I didn't have the, uh, the, the free time for it. Well, I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> yeah, no. I, and again, I, I really liked it. It's a great group of people and they got a lot of things, good things going. So um, I think you'll enjoy it. So other committees have been the, um, the Traffic Mitigation Committee um, and Bill has been our representative. That committee I think has wound down now and Bill's gonna provide an update for us on that. And then the other is, um, Rich, you've been serving as our representative on the Steering Committee for East Milton and I presume that you wanna continue doing that? 
Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Did I forget any committees, Bill or Allison? What about the Central Ave Business District Committee or whatever that is? Is that still in existence? <laughs> That's right. That you're you are it, a representative for that, aren't you, April? I, I don't know. I remember. <laughs> you, you are. You but are, I'm, and Mr. Okay. Uh, Zykowitz is the chair, and it hasn't really had that much going on down there, so there haven't been any meetings. Okay, well, I'll, I'll continue it then. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect complaint. That's excellent. That's all right. Rich, Rich, is, um, Rich has actually discussed with Kathleen about the fair housing. Um, housing and fair housing are two separate things. Um, oh, okay, that makes re sense. The regional fair housing is something that meets uh, three to four times a year and usually meets in Quincy or uh, Braintree. Yeah. Do you want to take that? You're wanting to give that spot up, Rich, or are you willing to take that spot, Kathleen? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't, I don't, I went to one or two things and then I, I never really, I don't know what goes on with that committee and I don't know when they meet. I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm, it, you've heard as much as we have. All right. Cause so their, <laughs> uh, their website as like on the town website has never updated. doesn't even, I don't even think it shows me on the, the committee. Um, I've, I've, yeah, I don't know anything. I, as far as I know, they've never met, but maybe they meet and don't tell me. <laughs> so I, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, so Kathleen. From my point of view, it's not a very big lift because I don't know. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but and I'm not trying to be nasty to them. I just I just maybe they didn't know I was part of it. I don't know. Well, I won't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I did get the one thing I went to was a regional event, and it happened to be at Weymouth High School, and I actually thought it was great. It was a it was a uh, 101 for uh, folks that own a uh, rental property. And so there was a ton of um, landlords there and developers asking a panel all things, you know, related to laws regarding, you know, owning, um, you know, rental properties. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. it was a great event. And I was, you know, at first I was thinking to myself, why do they even have this? Everything was ba so basic. And you know, it's, but the questions that folks ask made me understand why they have those meetings. <laughs> so. Okay, so, um, so Kathleen, did you want to do both of those housing? Yeah, things? that's fine. Okay. All right, so I, um, I guess I'll take, do we need a motion for appointing people to the committees? Uh, uh, sorry, can I just, sorry, one more comment. Mm -hmm. And just uh, for some um, more context, Kathleen, I believe, and I don't know if he still is, but when I was put on that regional one, I think um, Alex Whiteside was the select board's appointee because they also have an appointee. So he might know more about it as well. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look. I mean, I, I was, you know, I do a lot of housing work with affordable housing trusts and, and those kinds of, pro and the affordable housing projects. So I'll just check with some folks. Cool. The other person is Joe Duffy from the Housing Authority. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, Cheryl. Okay, no problem. So um, I'm not certain that we need a vote, but if we want to have a vote that just puts that slate forward as discussed, um, I'll take a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. All those in favor will do a roll call, and I will read your names off to make it easier. So uh, Cheryl Tugayas, yes. Kathleen O'Donnell? Yes. April Anderson? Yes. Danny Swenson? Yes. And Rich Beeler? Yes. Okay. And um, Bill, can you help me remember the proper name of my committee? It's like the, I know it's technology. <laughs> Wireless Telecommunication. Wireless Design, Telecommunications. Design Review Committee. Design Review Committee, thank you. Uh, awful. <laughs> oh no, it's actually, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, next is any other, actually any other questions or discussion on the, that topic? No. Um, so um, as I understand it, we are going to 
the election is the ninth, we'll vote on a new chair or we'll vote on chair uh, for June, on June 11th. Correct. Okay. And then um, the town meeting is June 15th. Okay. Right. I mean, on, the town, on the town meeting, I got this letter from the town clerk saying that as a town meeting member, I was supposed to be voting to see whether or not we were going to do it on Zoom. And the information in the letter was incorrect. There wasn't, the link didn't work. Um, and I sent a text to say, I don't know how, what I'm supposed to be doing with this, but, um, uh, and nobody's answered. So I don't know, how are they handling the town meeting on June? Well, uh, thanks for actually reminding me. Uh, what they were looking, my understanding is they were looking to see um, how comfortable town meeting members were with um, the Zoom technology platform. And then they wanted to have a means for uh, boards that need to confer um, at town meeting to have a separate platform to do that. I called Frank Schroth, who was, I think I forwarded you the email from the yeah. town moderator, uh, mm -hmm. Robert Hiss, about this. Um, so I, uh, I phoned um, Frank Schroth, who's the chair of that committee. And, um, and in that discussion, he and I uh, thought that it would be best if there was a kind of a common platform that the town decided to use for the committees. And he was, um, he said that there would be further communication about that. My sense is that we don't, we will not likely need to confer, um, if at all, maybe just a, if a planning board or master plan budget items come up. But since the zoning articles are not um, in this warrant, I didn't see a, a large need. Now for the July 28th, if it's the same platform, we will likely need um, a fairly robust means. So that uh, will, will be something um, that we'll have to, to take up, um, I think, as that gets closer. But it could be that we do a conference call. One of the things that was unclear to me is, if you have a conference call, do you keep the conference call open the whole time of town meeting, you know, while you're on your Zoom? <laughs> so some of the, and, and text message seems like, you know, how, it's not live like we have now where you can kind of go back and forth. So he and I kind of were thinking that, um, maybe some further information on the town side about how to, how to, which platform might be best. Um, well, as I said, the, the, the sort of said, well, you got an email that you didn't respond to. And I said, well, I didn't get an email from the town clerk or from the moderator asking me for my opinion on a zoom call. And then the oh. letter, you know, the link on the letter didn't work. So I, I don't know what they, what they said a hundred percent response. Well, they're not getting one from me because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Huh. Well, I can forward that email to you. It's a pretty quick, uh, did, did everybody else get the email with the survey? Yeah. I'm not a town meeting member because I moved. Oh, okay. So I had to resign my old seat. Now I'm on the ballot for this time in precinct two. So I don't know what, how this works for me. <laughs> I got the letter and my link worked. So I took it, but I also today, just before five o'clock, I got another letter. Um, basically from, uh, I don't know, from, from Robert Hiss or Sue Galvin, but kind of explains what their plan is a little bit, so. Well, well, that's I haven't gotten that one either, so. That's a letter or an email, Rich? It's an email, sorry. The email was at 4.58 p.m. I got one. Yeah, I got that yeah. too. Okay, yeah. I haven't checked that since, I haven't checked my email uh, since before but that. The other thing <laughs> I got was a letter and I had, you know, I went to the link and it worked for me I would imagine my link was hopefully specific for me because it never asked me my name. And so I would assume it was my link. I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't, so. Yeah. I never got the first email. I haven't gotten this second one. Yeah. And I didn't, on the letter, the link didn't work. So. So I. Um, one, one was the survey. Right. The letter today was registration for town meeting. I didn't get that. All right. I'm going to forward that to you, Kathleen. Yeah. I know that they're still waiting for the legislature to approve virtual town meeting. Yeah. That hasn't been done yet. If that gets, if that doesn't get done by this time next week, they will switch to a plan B, which would be the field house or the football field. Yeah. But 
they are trying to get uh, the Zoom platform. They have they have it set up that you'll have Mr. Hiss, his chief of staff, Frank Schroth, and uh, several people from Milton Access TV and a couple of other people in there uh, manning screens so that they can make sure that they see everybody, that they can uh -huh. get everybody's comment. Um, because I do know that trying to follow everybody's chat, make sure that all the participants oh, yeah. are, are either open or shut or whatever, make sure that the product that's up on the screen and then watch people's faces <laughs> and get really, yeah. it, it gets a little tricky. You, you start tripping over people. Yeah. Well, thanks. And, and Mike, uh, yeah, Mike just sent me the, the link. So, uh, yeah, I didn't get that. So I don't know where, what the heck they're doing. There's a training session next week. So that would be what that link is. Mm hmm Okay. I'm looking at my junk folder. I don't see it there either. So, so maybe uh, the the clerk's office needs an updated email for you, Kathleen. Well, crying out loud. <laughs> I did call and left a message, and I haven't gotten an answer. So okay. All right. So um, I don't see that anybody has joined us who wasn't with us uh, in terms of participants in this meeting or call. Um, Denny, did you still want to keep this open oh, no, in terms of the public ahead. hearing? Okay. No, yeah, we can. Um... Okay. So I, uh, I go back to the public hearing for the site plan approval for 919 Blue Hill Avenue, Little Sprouts, and uh, I will um, entertain a motion to continue to our June 11th meeting at 7.05. I would move that we continue the uh, hearing on Little Sprouts to June 11th at 7, what did you say? 05. I'll second. Okay, we need a roll call vote. Cheryl Tugayas, yes. Kathleen O'Donnell? Yes. April Anderson? Yes. Denny Swenson? Yes. And Rich Beeler? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ned, for staying with us. All okay, right. Okay, um, thank you very much. Next on the administrative items, the uh, Director of Planning Posting. Um, our planner, our Director of Planning, uh, Bill Clark's contract um, expires at the end of June and it is not being um, extended. And the position has been advertised and we've been asked to uh, designate a member to the selection committee um, for um, reviewing the resumes and selecting and assisting in selecting um, a person to fill that position. Um, the, the position is um, advertised closing date is tomorrow and their plan is to um, schedule interviews, um, I think, rather soon. And our designee would participate in those interviews. I, um, I have received, I believe, about six or eight resumes that I've put into a folder that I'm going to share with all of you. And my thought is um, that all of us can send our individual thoughts and comments to our designee. And then our designee can share those um, with the, the rest of the committee and think about those as they participate in the selection. Does that make sense? Yep. Everybody good with that? Okay. Now, um, I know at least one person is interested in being our designee. Um, anybody else interested in being our designee? If, if that one person is me <laughs> or not. Or okay. is that someone else? <laughs> well, um, that means there's two of two of us now. Oh, okay. So there's two of us <laughs> interested. <laughs> I didn't know how you would know that I was interested. So no, um, April had um, been a designee for us in the past and has expressed interest in being a designee um, again. Um, I mean, my feeling is that we all are going to um, provide our feedback. Um, but that it would be, um, you know, 
less cumbersome if there's one person who can be our conduit to the rest of the steering committee. Can, yeah, can sure. I, if I was the person you're talking about, I'm, I'm perfectly fine uh, handing that baton to Denny if she's interested. Okay. But, and I'm also happy to share it. I'm happy to share it with April if April's interested, if, if it's possible to have a co-representative. Um, can I ask a question about it? Sorry, I just don't, I don't want to derail that conversation, but I'm, I don't understand, like, what is, I'm not interested in being the designee, I'll start there. Um, but what is the designee? Because I, I am interested in being a part of hearing about it. And, you know, if there is times for us to weigh in, I'd like to do that too. So yeah, is my it just one person that gets to do that or do we all? Well, I think that the request for was for one person. The select board also has one person that they, um, I think last night may have selected. Um, the, but as, as far as weighing in, that's why I, I have this um, this shared folder that I'm going to share with all of the um, resumes will be, and the job description will be in it. And I think, um, you know, what we, if I'm open to other ideas about how you want to do this, but my thought was, um, uh, given the, the um, that this is a staff position, it, it would be something where we could uh, provide our feedback to our designee and our designee could provide that to the hiring authorities because we're not a hiring authority, right? So um, in April, I don't know if you want to, if you have any comments based on what you've done in, in the past yeah, as a designee. Sure. Yeah, sure. It's just, um, it's like an interview committee. And in the past, it's been Paige, Epolito, Bill, myself and Mike Dennehy for the last two assistant planners, I think. Um, and then I sat on the town administrator screen. It's like a screening committee. And what we did was review all the incoming um, resumes and kind of talk about it and narrow those down to candidates and interview them and provide a recommendation to the select board. Okay, so uh, Denny suggested possibly, well, Rich, does that answer your question? Do we answer it between us? Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. I, I guess what I'd be looking for is whoever our designee is to kind of come back and let us know what's going on. So. Okay, so an update at our next meeting. And if you two are interested in, in doing this jointly, I have, um, I have no problem with that. I would, I'm going to send my thoughts um, after I review all of the resumes to whomever it is. I do know that um, they're looking to schedule the interviews as quickly as possible. So it might be that um, your schedules might help decide <laughs> how busy I, both of you are. Okay, so um, I don't think we need a vote on that, but um, Kathleen, do you have any sense? Do we need a vote on that? Are we? Oh, um, I think so. Oh. Okay, one second. I mean, we don't have, we don't, it's not, we aren't making a decision. It's okay. just on the interview okay. committee. I don't okay, so April and Denny, you're going to share this role? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I can, I'm happy to defer to you, Denny, and just. Oh, I, I'd be, well, um, you know, we could do, let, we could plan to defer, and I will talk to you in real time. And if you can make it based on your work schedule, come to the interviews. And if you can't, I'll, I'll be sure to like go to every interview okay. possible. Okay. And if okay. April has time to sit in on any of them, I would welcome her experience because I think the people that she has selected in the past are phenomenal. So. I'm thinking there's probably people I know that are on that. I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So we'll leave it at that. Um, now we're going to move on to um, some updates. Um, Bill will provide an update on the traffic mitigation committee and also on um, a staff report on 8 Parkwood, which is where the landscaping was removed in the scenic way. 333 Brushell Road, which I think we all know what that involves. And then also um, Woodlet Drive, Pulte Town Farm uh, development. So Bill, thank you. Okay. Um, 
Traffic Mitigation Committee submitted its final report to the selectmen, I think two weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> the committee met for a year, 7 a.m. on every other Thursday. And it, it was a lot of public, uh, a lot of public meetings, uh, a lot of public input. Uh, we had actually over 451 comments from the public on our wiki maps, which was open for about three or four months. Um, we did a, that wiki maps was a follow up to what we had done on complete streets. When we turned in our complete streets wiki map, we had the highest number of comments in the state. Uh, nobody else had had that many before. Now all of a sudden we come in and we match that number just on our own traffic mitigation committee. Um, the issues were congestion, safety, and other modes of transportation. Uh, recommendations coming out of the committee was that the town adopt Vision Zero. It's a way to looking at slowing traffic to increase bike and pedestrian options. Uh, it's to look at enforcement and make sure that we do do more enforcement. Um, we had roadway discussions. We, we talked about all of the different uh, ins and out of town, whether the corridors or not. We talked, uh, we have several corridor studies being done now. We have one on 138, we have one on 28. We have another uh, study being done for the Chickatawban intersection. Um, a lot of what was done is very technical. So one of the recommendations is that the town look into having a dedicated traffic engineer. Um, we actually heard from a lot of the public and we actually took their comments to heart. An example of that would be uh, the block the box that's down on Wharf Street on Ad at Adams. Um, the people out of 88 were saying that they couldn't, they couldn't get out of 88 because the people in the morning and the afternoon would block the box when they get stuck at the light at, uh, at Elliott. So the town put in the, with DPW doing the work, they put it, uh, they painted the box in front of Wolf Street. Um, that one works. We have a similar one in front of the police station and there will be another one in front of the library uh, when we get full staff back that we can start doing more painting. Um, another recommendation there was uh, the traffic commission is, it needs a new charge. It needs a new, uh, new composition. Both of those are discussed in the report. Um, it, another recommendation was that we follow complete streets. We got $400,000 for um, our report and for projects leading up to the, the first phase. And we've already done some of that. We've already have the report done and accepted by the state. We've already done the Lincoln Street, uh, Lincoln Street sidewalk, which increased the pedestrian way and uh, kind of redid the traffic on Lincoln Street too. We have, uh, speed limit down to 25 and do more work on the speed limit being put down to 25 town-wide. Uh, we were in complete support of the town-wide model for, for a call of transportation. Um, another recommendation is that the planning, if the master plan implementation committee use this plan in future efforts, which we understood where, uh, where some of the comments came from, like the Milton Village lights, uh, the Milton Village uh, discussion between Milton and Boston on the Adams Street connection. Um, all of those are in the report. Uh, focus is on demand, reduce the traffic uh, by encouraging less demand, by improving the efforts with the MBTA, improve pedestrian, uh, the pedestrian environment and it's a fairly long report. Um, I think it was very well written, very well attended and um, it had selectmen, uh, Mike Zulis, Jeff Mullen, Mike, uh, Mark Alba from the police department, 
uh, Dick Burke from Master Plan Implementation. Tracy Dykes um, is a citizen. Um, and me representing the planning board. And uh, Lee Toma, who, although he was a citizen attending it, uh, never missed a meeting. Um, and he made lots of comments to our draft report. So kudos to him. So Bill, the report is on the town website, right? So everybody can uh, yes. access it that way. And, and I sent the link to the board earlier. Okay. Questions for Bill? No, it was a lot of work and I just really appreciate that report. I mean, I, I'd like to sort of hope that we can use that some in, input into that when the, the 40 B's ever come before us. I mean, before, you know, before the ZBA. Um, I agree with that. And, and I do know that one of the other things in there was um, support for the traffic mitigation fund. Um, that's one I left out, but that, that was another, this is a group that supports that effort. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how that money can be spent. And there's language for that in the report. Excellent. So then does that mean that we should be going back to look at the traffic mitigation bylaw that was passed that Alex had comments on? Yes. Okay. Is, are there any specific recommendations in the report regarding that, Bill? No. Okay. Other questions for Bill? Other than that, we, we, once we get a traffic engineer, we have a whole lot better idea of um, who's going to take and lead these particular tasks. And that traffic engineer would be responsible for managing the townwide traffic model that's, or can you give us an update on where that stands? Uh, yes and no. Um, we were due to have uh, traffic counts in certain corridors back during the winter. We didn't, um, they didn't get done for a list of reasons. Then we had planned to have them done in March and then came COVID. Then we pushed it out and said, we'll do them in May and it got pushed out further. So okay. when they're going to do those traffic counts, I don't know. I do know that we brought uh, beta engineering and from particular hands, um, I want to say Jason. Um, Jason's right. It is Jason. Okay. Uh, the guy we have from Milton Village. We brought both of them in and they were there a couple of different times. Um, they, they came to all of the public hearings so that we had at night. They had the, uh, they came to all of those. They came to a couple with the, with the selectmen so that they could hear and incorporate our plan into the townwide model. Great. Um, when we get a new normal, um, we'll see. But you, okay. you don't want somebody doing traffic counts right now. They won't mean a thing. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, any, any other questions on the, the traffic folks? No. Okay, so Bill, if you wanna move on to 8 Parkwood. You got a letter from uh, Mr. Johanning and he was partially right in his comment about um, what that area is supposed to look like uh, and what it does look like. He said it looked very manicured. Well, it does look manicured. Um, originally, it had lots of understory. It had trees. When the trees got taken down, it didn't take out the understory. The understory just kept on coming. When they planted the new trees, they put in some they put in bushes as well as trees. And some of those bushes were starting to get overrun by some of the native understory. Um, I'm guessing that it's people from the neighborhood who came in, cleaned the area up, but by cleaning it up, they did uh, do, as he says in his letter, that make it look like it was a manicured area. Um, it is not the people who live in that house. They. I don't think they understand anything over there on, on what's happening with it. They just know they don't own that. Um, we still have all of Mr. Keneally's money. He hasn't gotten anything back yet. Um, 
I did talk to Branch Lane several different times about going out, looking at the trees, and we felt that um, two of the trees, and it's the, uh, the red oaks, seemed to be really strong on the bottom and they were a little weak on the top. And that may have been that when they first got planted, they didn't get enough water. So that part was a little stressed. And because of that, we didn't want to turn back any money until that those trees were either replaced or we waited to see what happened to the tree. So we waited to see what happens with the tree. And now all of those trees are in bloom. Um, they actually look pretty good. And I'm due to go with branch again shortly. Um, um, Cheryl, yes. I, um, I, I didn't want to interrupt, um, but to compliment um, Bill's update, I did reach out um, to the neighborhood leadership because um, they had been so active um, in the past. And I got an email uh, 10 minutes before our meeting, and I can read it into the record if you like. It's um, it's it's the same similar update um, from their perspective. Sure. Is that okay. Okay. Um, so uh, to the to Denny and the planning board, um, the Hillside Neighborhood Association reports that three out of seventeen trees are in danger of needing replacement in the mixed restitution planting of seventeen trees and eighty shrubs on Hillside Street at the corner of Parkwood Drive. The planting was paid for by developer John P. Keneally on instructions by the planning board to Mr. Keneally, who was seeking a building permit after illegally cutting down 33 large trees, 12 medium trees, 18 small trees. And this is the background more for Kathleen because we all pretty much remember this. It was right before Kathleen cut on. Um, uh, on the town setback of the scenic and historic street in December of 2017. So Mr. Keneally was also instructed at that time to place 12,000 in the town treasurer's office to be used as needed to guarantee the planting success. The three failing trees are one hornbeam at the corner of Hillside Street, two red oaks, which gives the Latin name. But, um, at this time, the Hillside Neighborhood Association, which accepted the planning board's invitation to monitor the success of the planting in 2018, feels that none of the 12,000 of Mr. Keneally's money should be returned to him yet, as some of those funds may be needed to, in the fall, uh, to replace these failing trees. Mr. Keneally's funds may also be needed to fix the watering system installed during the 2018 planting on direction by the planning board. Um, Bill Clark linked the trees difficulties last year to problems with the irrigation system the Hillside Neighborhood Association would recommend the planning board request that Mr. Clark and Mr. Keneally inspect and if needed, fix the system and its timing mechanism so it's in working order before the summer's inevitable heat and drought and that the soil surface receives an inch of water per week um, and not just a light misting. We also recommend that if needed, some of Mr. Keneally's funds in escrow be spent to fix the irrigation system, pay the water bill which is metered separately from the owner's water meter, and to add a layer of four inches of shredded bark mulch to the entire planted soil surface to retain moisture for tree roots and reduce the need for irrigation and weeding. We also think that the planning board should revisit tree survival in September, which would be better, a better month for an annual review of the tree health and survival as opposed to early spring. Thank you for your consideration. And uh, this is Carol Stalker, 291 Hill Street, but she's, she's in communication with the leadership of the Hillside Neighborhood Association. Okay, well, thank you to Carol and the Neighborhood Association and to you, Denny. Um, so the action item out of there that I, guess we may want to consider for tonight is Bill the um, inspection on checking on the workability mm -hmm. of the irrigation system and then the um, the mulch is that right Danny yeah yeah so the sprinkler system um, needs to be checked and if it's not in working order able to to deliver an inch a week on a timer so we need all those, we need the timer mechanism and we need that amount of water, not just misting. 
Um, and if it's not able to do that, we need to repair it or, or fix it in order to do that and then mulch. And then um, continue to withhold the funds until the checking in September. April? Have we been, has, um, I forget the man's name, even though everybody's just said it a hundred times, but has really? the applicant um, requested his funds be released? No. Okay. No, this conversation uh, was prompted by the email from Mr. Johanny. Yeah. And then so, Carol provided additional input. Exactly. Yeah. So in so, response to some of Mr. Johanning's questions, in the long term, you know, years from now, it's not going to look like this manicured thing. But in order to get the trees through this early survival, mm -hmm. it would be good to mulch to, so the tree roots aren't fighting with the weeds for mm -hmm. the water. So, but here's my question. Are we supposed to be doing that work and paying for it out of the money that's set aside? or they're supposed to do it and we just hold this as an indemnification in case they don't? B. E, yeah. Uh, Second option. We're holding this in case they don't. And the come fall, if they don't, we might need the money for new trees. Part, part of the issue here is Mr. Keneally went into this asking for two meters. And when they came up with the two meters, um, he wanted to have one that was going to be dedicated for that area. And the DPW didn't want to give him one for that. I'm not sure if that house has two meters now or one meter. Um, but I believe what happened is now the one is attached to the same meter as those trees. And that wasn't the plan. Um, but I know that part of this came because DPW change the uh the metering requirements for the project but again we do have his money we we don't have any legal standing to do this work but um the planning board made a they made a requirement of a guy who did not come before the planning board for his project so didn't need to come before them Kathleen, he should have come before us because it's a scenic road. Yeah. And, and it's town property where the, all the trees were removed. And so... <laughs> he didn't know. He, he, he cut the trees down to the wall. He didn't yeah. realize that the town owned 20 feet inside of the wall. No. I mean, I just want to say, in, in Mr. Keneally's defense, he didn't he didn't understand his boundary, which is a mistake, but he, I thought he was very accommodating and I thought Carol Stalker was excellent in the request for the neighborhood and it seems to be going fine until now. And maybe, I mean, who's our authority on this branch lane? Or yeah. something? Well, um, yeah, so the, the, the neighborhood was designated uh, uh, I, and I think branch lane was as well. Um, to sort of oversee and monitor and report back to us. So, so maybe, so maybe uh, Bill should have a conversation that includes Carol, uh, perhaps the uh, Mr. Keneally or the new property owner. Are, so the new what are we, did you issue a decision? This is like a punitive measure oh. after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> this is a diminishing bond. It was supposed to, we were gonna give him his money back as things succeeded. But didn't we already release some of the bond to him? We have not yet. Oh, we no. haven't. It was an application after the fact, Kathleen. Yeah. It wasn't even an application. We don't have any application. He didn't. All right, right, okay. So, I, you know, I, I, we can only look at the terms of the bond agreement, apparently. That's the only thing you've got. I have three checks for $4,000. No, you were supposed I mean to get $4,000 back a year as success with the trees. He mm -hmm. had an agreement put together by his landscape architect um, to plant X, Y, and Z for trees and bushes. That's what he did. He was supposed to provide um, uh, watering for those plants. He did. Now he sold the house. And when he sold the house, I don't exactly know what happened to the meters. So my problem is, well, we don't know that somebody isn't going to agree to do this work, right? 
Right. I mean, the, the hope is that the trees survive come September. We're fine. Right. But right now we have three, we have three trees that are questionable. So who's going to replace those trees? Well, hopefully he'll, he'll be willing to replace those trees. And if he's not at some point, then we should be able to replace but those. But if he sold the property, he doesn't have, unless he kept it a right town property. It's town, town property. property? Okay. Yeah. Town. It's town property. And we gave him a license to do that. No. He did it without no, no. we gave him give him a yes. license now. He yes. needs oh, to fix it. Yeah. To fix yes. his mistake. We Okay. We gave him permission to fix his mistake. Okay. But we haven't he hasn't said he's not. Correct. The planning board gave permission for a selectman piece of land. Yeah, but I'm saying is that we right now we don't know that he won't do whatever you we, want to. We're hoping he will do it. Yes. We're just and giving then, an update to the public because Phil Joe Henning wrote in. Okay. Because my next issue about it is that he decides he doesn't want to do it. We have a real question about whether anything's enforceable. Right. So well, that's there is an agreement. I mean, there was a verbal agreement and it was in public meetings and then there was documents that support the agreement. So there well, is- I'd like to see what the document is. So Bill, can you share the documents Plans. with Kathleen? You can and just then, email it to me later. I don't need it yeah. now. Yeah, no, that's what I meant. And um, and and talk with uh, Mr. Keneally and, and maybe we can have an update um, at either the next meeting or the following one. Okay. How's that? Yep. Okay, good on that folks? Yeah. Huh? All right, 333 Brush Hill Road, Bill. 333 Brush Hill Road. Um, the issue is is Mr. Crispin happy? No, Mr. Crispin isn't happy. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Crispin gives his reports to me and to Kevin Freitag. Kevin Freitag winds up having discussions with uh, Mr. McKenna's attorney, and he's tried with Mr. McKenna too, but right now it's attorney to attorney. Uh, we keep getting letters back from Mr. McKenna, who really doesn't understand who Dave Crispin works for. He keeps saying, stop sending letters to the lawyers. Every time you send a letter to the lawyers, I wind up getting a bill. And that's, he doesn't understand that Dave does not work for him. Dave works for the town of Milton. Mr. McKenna, the developer, has his own engineer. His own engineer hasn't done the work he's supposed to be, and that would be Fred Geisel. Fred Geisel goes to a meeting and the idea comes up, this is what you have to do. A lot of the design ideas are put together by Mr. Crispin. Mr. Crispin will take and draw on Fred's plan, tell him what he needs to do, try to walk him through it, yep, yep, I'll do that, and he doesn't do it. Or it'll show up a couple of months later and then they're like, well, how come it's not getting done? Well, Mr. Geisel hasn't turned it over to get it done. Um, I know that Kevin and I are extremely frustrated with the developer. Uh, with Kevin is frustrated talking to the attorney and Kevin wanted me to uh, tell the planning board what is going on so that it doesn't appear that the two of us are sitting on something that is just a nightmare. Um, we are trying to work through it. Um, we do have an issue that uh, Mr. Crispin hasn't been paid for the last six months. Um, he's been paid by the condo association, but not by the developer. The developer feels put upon because there were things added into that plan by Mr. Crispin. And it's like, no, there weren't things added in by Mr. Crispin. There were things added in that fixed the mistakes that Fred Geisel had in his report or picked up on things that Fred didn't add into his plan that should have been added into his plan. So Kevin is uh, actively pursuing next steps with the attorney for Mr. McKenna, but nothing's been being done out there. The grass is growing taller. Um, Dave went out the other day and sent back a quick report that um, they've lost, they lost the early planting season um, it looks like now they're going to have to wait until the uh, 
early fall planting season in order to get the appropriate grasses. They've already lost some of the new trees that they planted because they didn't put appropriate watering out there. Um, it is what so, it is, and so, Dave is on the on the. I, Kevin is on the case. So just um, so everyone remembers, and and for Kathleen who wasn't with us then, um, no certificates of occupancy will be issued by the building commissioner, Mr. Prondack, until uh, this issue of uh, the stormwater and the landscaping is resolved. This was all subject to litigation, Kathleen? Yeah, no, um, actually I did have some involvement on it, but okay. I had some issue before the ZBA. Okay. We had an enforcement action that came before us, so yeah. Yes. So Mr. Prondack checks in with the bill yeah. to, before, uh, to, and uh, has, has made it clear he has no intention of issuing any certificates of occupancy for those three homes until these issues are resolved. Uh, is, is Thank goodness still, we have David Crispin. <laughs> uh, is yes. it still flooding down onto Truman, onto the no. downslope? No. He fixed, Dave, Dave came in with several different fixes and um, they did do some of those fixes. Um, the, the, the people that are out there that are working for the contractor just don't understand that Mr. Geisel is supposed to be their engineer, not Dave Crispin. Um, them asking Dave is one thing, and Dave is nice enough to give his suggestion, but truthfully, the plan and design is something that's being stamped by Mr. Geisel, not by Dave Crispin. Dave Crispin's trying to help and make sure that things don't happen, like flooding, like the system overflowing, uh, like the amount of dead trees and stuff, but it's not his project, it's not his stamp that's on the plan. And Joe Prondack understands that, Kevin Freitag understands that, and Kevin keeps bringing that back up to uh, Mr. McKenna's lawyer. Okay. And Any did other? they plant the grass? Did they ever plant the grass? So, it, so it's not, so it's not all weeds and it's actually absorbing the water? Um, that's like a 50-50. There are a lot of weeds. There is grass. They planted the grass in November. When they mm -hmm. planted the grass, it, it froze, so it didn't do anything, and it's just now, it's coming in, but it has more, um, more weeds than, than the appropriate grass. And they didn't fix it in the spring. Well, that would be a nice selling point. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for that update. Sorry you had to give it. It's okay. Okay, um, update on Woodlot Drive, Bill. Woodlot Drive, 23 homes on 30 acres. Uh, there are 10 certificates of occupancy for the 23. Uh, number 11 is due the beginning of July. Number 12 will be the middle of July. And number 13 will be the end of July. They expect 14 beginning of August. They have one lot that is not under agreement at this time. They have, um, they have deposits on 22 of the 23 lots. Mm -hmm. um, they, I actually just signed off on three lots today uh, with the building department. So they just started filing their plans for the full houses. Um, we have a follow-up meeting for the uh, two affordable units off-site on Church Street next Friday, not, not tomorrow, the next Friday. Um, we, had a, we had an initial walkthrough of the house after DHCD came out and said, um, okay, this is what we think you need to do. Uh, Pulte did most of the things on the list. We went out and looked at it. We came back, we wrote a letter and uh, Tom Callahan, Julie Kramer, uh, Cheryl and I went out on a Friday morning and went through the house with Reed Blute. Uh, we came back, gave him a punch list of more things that needed to be done. And Reed's like, 
okay, I'll get it done. Um, Reed was gone in a week. Uh, that next week he was, uh, he was furloughed by Pulte and Mark Mastriani has taken over where Reed was. The majority of this board remembers M Mark Mastriani. He's the one that brought the project through the permitting phase with the planning board. So Mark doesn't need a, uh, doesn't need to be educated in what's there. Um, he, his office was right beside Reed, so he knew right where Reed was. Um, he's the one who actually turned the documents, the legal documents into uh, Pulte's attorney. Pulte's attorney has given them to town council. Town council has reviewed them. They've made their changes with the lawyers. Um, I'm due to talk with Kevin and another associate from Murphy Hesse tomorrow morning, and we will hope, hopefully finalize those papers so we can get them all over to DHCD and get approval for starting the, um, the lottery process. But we'll be looking at the building to make sure that the punch list was done next week. So I, I noticed your correspondence. Um, are we to attend that site walkthrough? Or is that just, that's for the building inspector? And no, that's more uh, for um, saying no. I'm not saying no, but it's a case of, um, it, it's more for uh, Julie, Tom, um, who, who makes recommendations back to DHCD. Yeah, I went on the, um, the last one uh, just to see it myself um, and understand what Julie and Tom were looking at and thinking about so that I would have that in, in mind for future reference. Yeah, that's a good idea. So if you're available and, and are interested in doing that, I think um, you know, let, let Bill know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I've already said that I would if you, I mean, because in my neighborhood, so it's not like that far. I can walk there wearing a mask. You, 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 you did say that to me, and I'm not sure if, if that went back to anybody else. Yeah. All right, great. I'm, I'm happy to do it because I'm already here. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, I um, I wasn't planning to to go back, Bill. I'm sure that um, that Julie and um, Tom and you can handle it. But yeah, just for others for future reference, I think it's if you can make it great. Right. I mean, I, I mean, they they put in new kitchens, they put in new baths, they put down new flooring, they fixed the walls, they painted everything inside, um, they did some plumbing. Um, we went back to the punch list and it came back that they should have split the uh, water meters coming into the house instead of one, now they're at two. Uh, there's two new furnaces. Um, there's already separate utilities for everything now, but they have a new, uh, new furnace in one and a new uh, boiler in the other. So Great. They, they did get a lot of new. I think it's a nice property myself. So. I think it's great. And then they're going to have, they, aren't they, were, they were supposed to be sort of funding a condo association, you know, reserve fund for that too. So. Yes. Yeah. So there's a big, there'll be a big, um, Pulte had to buy the building. Pulte had to go and do all of that work for the building. Right. The yeah. units will now be sold and the money that gets taken in from the sale will go to uh, the Affordable Housing Trust and um, they will keep the fund for that building and they can take the rest of it to increase more affordable housing someplace else in town. No, no, they're gonna, the condo association should be having the reserve fund. That's not- But not all of that, not if, if you sell, I, I, I'm making up numbers. If you sell one for 200, the other for 300, they don't get the 500,000. They get a portion of that for that fund. Right. And that, that number would be um, determined by the uh, Affordable Housing Trust. So there's something in it for the Affordable Housing Trust to do that, um, to do that oversight. You'll remember that this was all worked out with DHCD and the Affordable Housing Trust. Yep. Um, 
I've forgotten the time frame for it, but not too long ago. All right. Um, thank you, Bill, for all of those updates. Um, we are, we'll move on to citizen speak. Uh, in the list of participants, I see one person um, who is not affiliated with the board in some way, and that's Mr. Shepard. I'm gonna unmute you, Mr. Shepard, to see if you'd like to speak to us. I think I'm gonna unmute you, or Bill, I'm not, it's not un allowing me to. Oh. He is himself muted. Okay, so Mr. Shepard, if you were, are interested in speaking to us, there you are, you're unmuted now. Uh, yes, no, um, I represent the Carpenters Union and I was just, I'm new to this area, so I just was listening in basically. Okay, well, great. Uh, welcome and um, if, if there's any uh, time that you have a, um, you know, questions for us, let us know. But uh, meanwhile, we'll continue on, okay? All right, so under um, old business, the discussion of Milton Village zoning articles. So we reviewed in detail um, at our last meeting, the revisions and um, I made the two changes, the two deletions that we had discussed at the meeting and sent it back to Bill and Allison. And I believe they circulated that version to all of us and posted it on the town website. Is that right, Bill? Yes. So that's been available uh, since shortly after that meeting. Uh, have you heard from anyone, Bill, regarding those revisions? No, I've just heard from, um, I've heard from two landlords down in that area that are um, anxiously awaiting the um, zoning article itself. So I, being a uh, sometimes regular read, reader of the Milton Times, I noted that uh, under transactions, five Canton Avenue sold uh, to the Falcone companies. Is five Canton the funeral home? Yes. yes. Oh, interesting. So um, we have, uh, as we've talked about before, you know, properties that have changed hands recently, at that one very recently, the other at um, the web mill, the building, the masonry building at the intersection of Elliott and Adams, which um, uh, Mr. Wild came in and spoke to us about his hopes for doing a mixed use development there. And we had other, um, as you know, um, owners of properties interested in the zoning. Okay, so um, we talked about, um, well, first of all, did anybody have any other thoughts about the zoning since our last meeting? No. No, okay. Um, so why don't we then um, take a, uh, a vote to submit that revised language to the select board um, for inclusion in the warrant um, for the July 28th meeting. Um, Can we do sorry. that after the public hearing on the 25th? We're still gonna have a public hearing, um, but the warrant will be closing on June 3rd. Okay. So um, if, we, if the public hearing um, results in us having uh, suggested um, edits, you know, we'll work with the schedule with the warrant okay, committee I, I on that. Your logic now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. Who moved, Who made the motion? April. Okay. And do we have a second? Second. All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Cheryl Tugayas, yes. Kathleen O'Donnell, yes. April Anderson, yes. Denny Swenson, yes. Rich Bueller, yes. Just so you all know, I'm looking at my screen, seeing your faces and names, and that's how I'm going through the order of who I'm calling out. <laughs> it's kind of like looking around the table when I get to do that. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm going to do a share screen. Um, I'm going to shut mine off. Okay, yeah, thanks, Bill. We're going to talk about the webinar, um, I think, a bit, but I did want to show you a couple of things that I've started in preparing for the webinar. You're still seeing mine, aren't you? Yeah. How about now? Now we see everybody. Let's see if we see um, the Q&A here. So one participant, you're it. There you go. <laughs> All 
All right, everybody see? Yeah. All right, so I um, have drafted this Q&A based on my time working on this um, zoning and uh, both on the master plan implementation committee and uh, on the planning board. Um, and um, this is something that I will send to all of you um, after tonight and you can take a look. But it kind of could serve as an outline also for a webinar. Um, so really basic, where is Milton Village, right? Because uh, some people may not know. Um, and then why are, why are we looking to change Milton Village? Or is it we that we're looking at to change it or someone else looking to change it with our guidance? And then just what is zoning? And following that, what is an overlay zone? And then going into a little bit more detail, what is mixed use zoning? What are the benefits of mixed use zoning? And then uh, because this is something that the zoning addresses this, what are the issues with the underlying business district zoning? So uh, I think th these are worth uh, continuing to think about um, that that underlying zoning does not allow multifamily housing. And with that, of course, since it doesn't allow it, there's no affordable housing requirements. And there are minimal dimensional standards. And so those dimensional standards are what control what's built. Um, and it actually allows larger scale than what's proposed in the overlay. Kind of tied to the minimal dimensional standards is that there are no design standards and there are no historic preservation provisions. And the parking requirements are excessive requiring too much land. So this zoning uh, looks at addressing those uh, issues within that were found with that business district zoning. So I think we're pretty familiar now with what all of the, what we think the uh, key benefits are, but we want to make sure that we go over these carefully in the webinar. And then questions that have come up, uh, why not change the, bis the business district zoning then add an overlay? I think this is something that's come up um, and really well. Um, the answer to that I think is fairly straightforward is that it would enable the mix of uses as of right but not would not require it. So what we're wanting to do is um, in the overlay is to actually require the mix. So you can still use the business district zoning or you can use, use the overlay zoning. So it doesn't change anything with somebody who whose property is a legal use and um, doesn't want to change anything there. And they'll still be in compliance. And then the question about why are we, you know, have we done this before kind of question is yes, we have two overlay districts right in this area. It's just that the, the things that about those uh, districts that don't apply to these properties is that they require larger land area as a minimum lot size. So we can go into that a little bit. And then a question that's come up is, will this allow too much development that is too large in scale? Will it kind of dwarf the district? And MAPC did a build out analysis. Uh, the the uh, master plan committee did a, another analysis, really um, testing the zoning to see that it would not actually have unintended consequences of scale. Um, and so I have a draft PowerPoint I'm gonna to go to next, but I just wanna run through these. Um, and this just provides some answers to that. Another question that's come up is, uh, will this allow historic buildings to be demolished, jeopardizing the historic character? And uh, the, the um, you know, one of the things I mentioned just a moment ago is that there are no historic, um, provisions in the existing zoning. So we are adding historic provisions here. And the zoning itself doesn't give any financial incentive for someone to demolish an existing building, to build a new building that's less square footage and requires more parking. So that was a test that was checked with MAPC as well. And then another question is, will new development cause more traffic problems? Uh, and then, you know, we can refer to the two traffic studies uh, that were done and talk about that a little bit. The same uh, or in a similar vein is uh, will reducing the minimum parking requirements cause more parking and traffic problems. Um, and we can go into that a little bit. 
again, with the beta analysis and MAPC analysis. And then um, how did this come about? So this is just the process that got us to this point of submitting this zoning. And then a further information links to the town website. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So I'll, I'll share that with you. You can see if you want to um, add to that list and change what the answers that I've included. Um, but I thought we could have that um, available as a mailer, you know, along with the zoning because the zoning language is, you know, you, if you're unfamiliar with reading zoning language, it can be hard to follow, right? And even if you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And then uh, can you see this? Okay, everyone. Yeah. All right, so I, I took um, uh, pages from the presentation that I did on behalf of the Master Plan Committee in September and have uh, changed some and added some and deleted some. And so just kind of run through, I thought, you know, we could have this as part of our webinar, kind of um, as different people can talk to it. Um, so this is just really showing the location to familiarize well, people. I don't think I'm seeing what, what you're saying. Uh, have the FAQ. You still have the FAQ? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me go back. How do I do that now? Um, let me do a stop share for a moment and go back to share and pick that. Now? Yep. Got it. Oh. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right, April. Thanks <laughs> for bringing that up. All right. So here's the, the locator. Um, I also have here um, Stephen Chung, who is the architect working with uh, Mike Roberts, the Hat House site, has a drone, and he shot this uh, video. And we can decide whether we think this video uh, would be helpful in in showing the location, because we could refer to the properties, the historic properties, the parking lots, the one-story buildings, um, while this runs. I'll also, um, I've heard that there um, there may be some interest uh, at extra space storage. A developer is talking with um, with that company about doing a project on that parking lot. Cheryl, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you can see that box right there. That's what um, Bill was. Yeah, no, that that box is great. Yeah, and the extended queue for the left, left turn only. I, oh, right. Okay, added. sorry. We can point that out. Okay. Yeah, and the, there's also new pedestrian crossing signs, which I think are really effective. I've been excited about these for a couple of weeks. I didn't know they came from the traffic committee, but I reached out to Chase um, and Mike Dennehy to say that was a really positive improvement. Yeah. Great. Man, that parking space at extra space is what, what a waste. Of yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, those two little buildings there and behind extra space that were part of that special permit. Um, that was granted to to extra space. Um, that um, that parking lot was intended to have a new building there. Oh too, yeah, no, I was in, I've yeah. been in those buildings. I I went to the open house when they did the first mill. Excuse me, Kathleen. Just I want to point out that that Citizens Bank building on the left there, that one story building, is its sort of target site in sort of some of our minds. Yeah. Same thing on the right there, that uh, kiosk. Yeah. That um, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, all right. Uh, and then uh, I think it's just helpful to see the scale, the difference between Adams Street and High Street. You actually can see it here instead of seeing it like in separate photographs. Um, you can uh, see the size of that Verizon building overhead. So it's really a big building. And you yeah. see five can't nav here. So, um, so what are your thoughts about including? Um, well, I think because you're you're doing this as a webinar and you're not doing it at town meeting, where yeah. people's attention span is pretty short. Um, you know, you, you have the ability, I think, to use this stuff that you wouldn't if you were, were doing this at the actual town meeting. Oh yeah, I mean, town meeting would probably be a ten minute presentation. I wouldn't even I do it. At, I mean, ten right. minutes at the max. So right. Um, so if we have a webinar and something on the on the website that people can watch at their own leisure or whatever and sort of see it, I think, you know, included and people can skip it if they don't want to see the whole thing. Okay. I, um, so we can think about that. 
And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to share this PowerPoint with you uh, after tonight, so you can uh, think about that some more. Oh, I just want to share one sure. second. Jenny just texted me; she got kicked off. Oh dear. Okay. For some reason, so she she wanted you to know she is no longer here. All right. Well, can she get back in? You said she said she tried five times and she can't she can't get back in using the same oh. one that she used last time. All right, so Mike, do you have any thoughts on that? You lose Mike too? No, I, I'm here. Oh, okay. uh, I don't see anyone in the waiting room and I don't have the meeting locked. Um, I did admit I walked away for a minute, so she came and I didn't see her, but. All right, so. All right, well, um, if she can't get back in, I guess um, she, we're really just going to run through this and if she has yeah. comments, maybe she can send them. She said, she just said she'll watch it on cable access tomorrow. I don't think she's too concerned about the, okay. All right. not being here. I don't, she's not going to ask us to adjourn. I mean, okay. All right. So I know um, that, I know, I, that came out horrible. She, she is concerned about not being here, but she's not going to ask us to adjourn. All right. So she'll catch up later. Okay. Um, are being created, I don't think so. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, so then this um, shows the um, the actual district, the boundary in kind of a darker photographed area, and then a map. And again, if this becomes, if people think this is too much, we can weed it out later. I'm just going to run through it quickly now, okay? And then uh, with the idea that it kind of introduces people to where it is. It introduces people to the zoning district, which is this, and then it comments on the historic context of the area um, with this uh, image from 1890. And you can see the Neponset River here and Adams Street running along there and High Street here. And there's my friend's grandfather's boatyard right there. Right here. Excellent. Well, you can see it's a busy waterfront in that time period. Uh, this is a map from that time period. And one of the things is that the like these pink buildings here still exist, right? Um, others have changed over time. And then uh, this was a series of showing Adam Street looking towards lower mills from an undated postcard, another undated photo, and then today, just to kind of give again the so continuity of the Masonic building on the right, which is a constant through those. Um, and then this, um, again, these were put together before the video, so we can decide if it's better to have video or these slides if we want to eliminate some. But the, the, um, the thing that I spoke to to this at the in September was the fact that all of these buildings on the Boston side have been converted to residential and on the Milton side, it's the storage building and then the one uh, Elliott Street um, commercial building with not, without residential. And this is that web um, mill. So the historic character and that historic building, which um, of course we want to see preserved and the current owner wants to preserve. Um, the Masonic building, the one I referred to in those historic photos, again, um, beautiful architecture we want to see preserved. Um, the Bank of America on the corner of Elliott and Adams that uh, many people have spoken about in terms of its historic character. The Swift Hat building um, and his sort of condition of that and sort of trying to have something that could work for redevelopment of that property with zoning. And then uh, again, sort of, these were, as I said, orienting people to the district. So maybe we don't need these, all of these photos. We don't need as many of them, yeah. 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 So we can, we can kind of weave through them. Um, the five Canton, just the idea that that's a development, um, redevelopment property now. Um, the kind of character of High Street, again, sort of maybe, we don't need, and then just the, that this is in the district as well. The waterfront is actually part of the district. And that's part of what our um, public realm bonus improvements could help with. And then um, this is um, just some 
context for the um, how it came out of the master plan, the goals of the district, um, the zoning and the shortcomings, like I referred to in the Q and A. <clears throat> this compares the existing um, business zoning with the two um, overlay districts that we have, and I circled the minimum lot size for those. <clears throat> These are some two of the buildings that were built under those two overlays for reference. And then this is some existing conditions analysis that helped arrive at the dimensional criteria of lot coverage and FAR. So if we stayed close to what these existing historic buildings were, that there would be no incentive to uh, demolish these buildings. And this is part of how we arrived at it including looking at what the height is on this building. And then uh, this goes to um, some of the key points that pulled out of the zoning. This is a diagram to explain um, the setbacks and the lot coverage. So that if the set, if you just try to do a footprint based on the setbacks, you would exceed our uh, maximum lot coverage. So your footprint would have to be smaller than what just the setbacks would bring you. And then this is to explain the heights and how the topography influences how tall buildings are going to be on Adam Street versus High Street at the yeah. top, that section yeah. through. The one on the bottom um, is an elevation frontal view of Adam Street looking towards the west, towards High Street. Uh, we're showing how the height restriction works and how it steps up. And my hope is to actually take and put in the existing buildings uh, photographs in this drawing. And then this explains, these were two that I had done before that explain the um, design standards, particularly for setbacks and stepbacks. All right, so, um, so that explains the zoning. And then these, there are a few slides here from MAPC's analysis, there's four, about how they arrived at how much you could build. So, um, we can go through those and set and refer the anybody who has more interest in the detail to the MAPC more detailed analysis. We can not include them here. Yeah, just, I just have know, a summary. Which yeah, is that. I, I'm thinking that that um, I don't think that that helps us to include all that um, because okay. I think people get concerned about non-residents telling us, you know, what can be done and not done in the town. So I think it, it helps us to sort of explain that this is a overlay district that, that, you know, we, that you've worked on, we've worked on. I don't think I want to have it look as if we borrowed it all from somebody else. That wasn't very clearly stated, but. <laughs> Okay, so um, take a look again um, as we look and if everybody agrees with that, we can certainly take those out. Um, so this, you know, is addressing sort of the how big is it? Will it be too big and how many square feet? So this is the numbers. Those numbers are pulled from that analysis. So then if we kind of skip down to the next one, which is again, the questions about the traffic. Um, these were highlights from the traffic studies, whether how much we want to go into that again, think about um, the parking. I think it's a lot of questions. There's a lot of been lots and lots of questions about traffic and parking. So um, there's two detailed studies. I mean, they're each uh, have a lot of information and then these are the highlights of them, but I think uh, it's worth highlighting and some of that um, I think there's action being taken already. On the parking side, looking at the existing, again, sort of understanding that like that building only has 16 spaces and even our overlay zoning would require 26. Um, and then the, um, the information from 
the perfect fit parking initiative as well as the beta study which is the back uh, the backup for our recommendation of the one space per unit and the one space per thousand square feet yeah and then uh you know well how what did you do to get it to this point this is that and then this is the here's where where we are in this process and where there's more information what i have not included or uh, and i'm just going to run through these slides because just so you know they're available this is what we had done for the financial um, analysis what the potential tax revenue benefit might be um, this is a build out analysis that I did uh, on behalf of the MPEC, which uh, said if this is what it might look like with a commercial development of the business zoning and then what it might look like with the overlay zoning. I looked at three sites, mm -hmm. um, you know, ran through uh, what I thought would fit and would working within the design standards and compared that to existing to commercial and to, um, into our overlay and i showed that in different views yeah great so that i haven't included those so if you think you know that that i mean a lot of people i think seem to uh, understand the zoning a little bit better by seeing those um so a lot of them got down to like more like even what these design standards can help modulate versus no standards of you know, of the business district. Um, so those are all, you know, tools that we can think about when, in running through the webinar. So I think with, if everybody looks at the Q and A, looks at this, thinks about the zoning and, and then uh, we can talk about it again. Great. Does that, does that make sense? Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, well, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to help people because, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm a visual person. So looking at the, the visual impacts of all those words, I think is helpful. So I think it'll help people understand it. No, I think that's great. Okay. Um, so then, um, the only other thing we have on, um, our agenda was any further discussion of the, condo conversion language that you sent and I'll admit Kathleen I haven't had a chance to give that more thought has anyone else no okay we'll just kind of keep that as a item on the agenda yeah, there's no uh, there's yeah. two things I just wanted to say is that mm -hmm. um, I did get some comments um, from uh, Joe Sloan about open space okay the prior version had a huge section about protecting open space but that's when you were using a parcel that was larger than five acres and so um, I had taken it out, but I'm going to put in some language with Joe's suggestion about protecting the existing open space on whatever parcel we're looking at. And um, the, uh, the, the, I'm also going to be showing it to the housing committee and it's on the agenda for discussion on June 2nd. Excellent. Great. All right. So, uh, with no other items on the agenda, I will um, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill, you're, I, you're muted, Bill. Do you wanna say something? Roll call vote. All right, motion to adjourn and roll call vote. Cheryl Tagayas, yes. Kathleen O'Donnell. Yes. April Anderson. Yes. Rich Beeler. Yes. All right. Thank you. Be Thank well. You. Stay well. Bye. Thank you. Stay well, everybody.